Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, coming at you on this Tuesday from an undisclosed location. I want to read you a passage from <clears throat> uh, Miguel Serrano's The Serpent Paradise. And it goes like this, page 91. The tantric hero is forbidden to practice love passionately or compulsively. This is a rule permitted only to the woman, since she is the active participant and because she represents the feminine aspect of the universe and the creative side of Shiva himself. She is Shakti or Kundalini. Shakti is in fact the creator of the world, or it is at least through her that God creates the world. Shakti is both the demiurge and Maya, or illusion, since illusion is the multiplicity of forms. God creates the world because of love, or rather out of his love for his Shakti or his active catalyst. Love is always an illusion or a dream, and so God does not really participate in creation. Instead, he remains untouchable and immobile. Uh, this metaphysical concept of woman playing the active role while man plays the passive role is not usually found in the imperfect human world. Nevertheless, in the tantras, the woman is reincorporated into divine life. The tantras see Shakti or the mother in everything. They consider her to be the pillar of both the macrocosm and the microcosm. Thus, liberation can only be achieved through contact with women in this world by means of a sexual pilgrimage. In tantric yoga, women first have to be recognized externally and then accepted as the only possible means of attaining unity. Marriage with woman is the first step, but it must always be a symbolical marriage. So, the important part of this video and this book is the teachings of Serrano and other teachers like Semel on Wior, um, neo-gnostics, is that kundalini yoga is a sexual practice which must happen between man and woman. Um, we have a bastardization of it in the real world which is called marriage, you know, uh, slave yoking via contract between man and woman where it starts with love, love is the bear trap, and the inevitable consequence of this is uh, blood, <laughs> bloodbath, losing limbs, dying, right? Uh, love is the great inducer. It induces you into all sorts of situations and really gets you in pickles. So, like it says, women have to first be recognized externally and then accepted as the only possible means of attaining unity. So, through caretza, through uh, non-ejaculatory sex, is how you gain the traction to connect the polarities and create a singularity. Um, the act of procreation, procreative sex, is too jarring, just, you know, way too jarring. Think about it. When you are... Uh, putting together uh, electro electrical components, do you jam and jostle the positive and negative fittings together? No, you don't. You calmly connect them so that they don't break and so that the fitting is, is tight, you know, wink, wink. So, uh, you know, the sexual unity is a symbolical marriage in terms of karetsa and kundalini yoga and tantric left-hand path sex, whatever you want to call it, because you're using what you've been programmed to use in a animalistic and, and uh, raw and raunchy way, and you're inverting that and you're using it as the uh, stairway to heaven back to your, you know, station as a uh, uh, human aspect of God, right? So, and then it says, right, a Shakti is the active, crea active creating component of the world, and uh, Shakti is both a demiurge and Maya or illusion, since illusion is the multiplicity of forms. So, yeah, and you know, the demiurge and Maya is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just the... Basically, I see it as the feminine component is the amplifier. Uh, just like in music, you have a guitar, and then the guitar uses, uses an amplifier to amplify the sound to reach the back of the hall. 
the feminine aspect is a, an amplifier in that it takes the original signal of the male and logarithmically exponentially amplifies it. Just like the moon has no power source of its own, it merely reflects the power that the sun gives it, right? So even Shakti, Shakti doesn't create the illusion. Shakti uses the power loaned to her or reflected to her from God, the Father Source, and uses this to create the world of physicality. So, you know, it, it says God creates the world because of love, but I would think that Serrano actually maybe miswrote this, that, that God allows Shakti to create the world because of love, or rather out of his love for his Shakti or his active catalyst. So I would venture to say that I don't even think that God, in that sense, created this world. I think it was Shakti, the feminine component that created all of this through the power given her from the masculine, from the father element. Because like I say, you know, the father God to us is like a single, uh, like a single father, you know, or like the deadbeat dad archetype, but not deadbeat. You know, he's just outside of the equation because uh, this wasn't even his uh, creation. It's him, his emanation going through the female component into to create this this realm let me put it this way like that pink floyd record with the prism the triangular prism and the light going through it and then the rainbow colors so the light that principal emanation is coming from the father god principle the triangle is shakti the uh, feminine component and then it travels the uh, masculine emanation travels through the feminine and creates the seven colors the seven colors of illusion, you know, the physical world. So it's interesting that the tantric hero, the male, is forbidden to practice love passionately or compulsively. That's only allowed women, you know, because the woman, again, is is the is taking the creative emanation of the man and putting it into kinetic energy. The male is potential energy, the woman is kinetic. So it makes sense that the woman in Tantra or Karetsa would be the one doing most of the jostling around of the moving, while the man is more stationary or not as uh, active, you know. And the more active the man is, the more easy it is for him to lose his balance, so to speak, and to, you know, eject the seed. Let's see what else we got here. So. <clears throat> let's see there was another quote from this book where Serrano says if you are righteous unknown friends will come to your aid even if you are alone in your room your thoughts will be heard 1,000 miles away and it's true you know I see the same thing with uh, in the past how I've met people who are on the path who are on a similar wavelength to me or even just starting my YouTube channel in April or March and a couple months later, I have a community of people who see more eye to eye with me, you know. So yeah, even if you are alone in your room, your thoughts will be heard a thousand miles away. If there's substance and substantiation and transubstantiation to those thoughts. So, very interesting. Um, anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. I was just keeping it short and simple. Um, I don't have too much time today, or right now at least. Um, let's see. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, please. And uh, if you enjoy the content, share with your friends. Uh, if you wish to contribute to the channel, my PayPal information or my uh, any of my payment information is uh, in the description of the videos or just email me at thesoftspokenshaman at gmail.com. <clears throat> also in the description, there's a link to the Discord server if you'd like to join. Basically, it's a whole pretty fun little community. We've got a lot of people all over, all over the U.S., all over the world, who like to share their thoughts. And uh, yeah, it's a bastion of sanity in a, a lopsided, upside-down internet world of idiocy and infotainment and uh, consumer consumerism, cum consumerism.
Anyways, guys, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later.